so still around the uh, 80s. Okay, so I'll, I'll start, the recording has started. So for our evening tutorial, which is the one we are at, we will be going through data engineering, just an introduction to data engineering and focusing on Twitter data, which is uh, the main source for our data this week. So I'll share a tutorial. I hope you guys have, will have the access to the folder now. The presentation I'm about to share is in the folder. I hope you can see my screen. Yes. Okay, sure. So data engineering is basically the process of moving data from one source to another. It, uh, it is the first step in uh, maybe like a data science project. Most of the data acquired in data science is in unstructured mode, and so data engineering will just involve moving it from an unstructured base to a structured um, environment. Unstructured can maybe like Twitter data and then maybe storing the data in a structured uh, database. Okay. It's uh, data engineering delivers correct data to the right people in the right form as effectively as possible. Like I've said, data engineering is the first step maybe before doing a machine learning, preparing the data, making sure it's in the right format. Uh, we have uh, removed maybe some uh, duplicates, all those. There are so many reprocessing that happens before the machine learning. So data engineering is basically just preparing the data, making it ready for a more, more step like um, machine learning. So the, one of the big uh, things involved in data engineering is building a data pipeline. And uh, a data pipeline, is a set of actions that ingests raw data from disparate sources and moves the data for storage and analysis. So I hope that is it's clear. We've said that we that engineering is getting data from unstructured way, like Twitter, which is raw, and then to a database that is structured. So the process of uh, now creating these functions and the process that will get this raw data and move it to a structured database is what, what is called now creating that uh, data pipeline. So when, uh, for example, because this week we will be using Twitter data, the steps involved in building a Twitter data pipeline is uh, getting an API key, which as you had been told earlier for Twitter data, you have to first apply for the API key on uh, Twitter developer.twitter.com you apply for the api key then you give the reasons why you'll be using it it's actually easier to say it's just for student reasons then you'll be granted the permission earlier it takes about around 48 hours to hear back from twitter and that's why for this week we've uh, we will not require you to have the api key but uh, we've collected the data for you maybe from the next week you'll need the api key so it's important to apply for the API key on Twitter. Next, we use a TP library. A TP library is a way of communicating between your data and uh, Twitter. So it is just like any library we have on Python, Pandas, Matplotlib. So TP is also a library that helps that uh, collection of raw data from Twitter to your storage become easy. Then we pre-process the data. Simply after getting any data, you can conduct exploratory data analysis to understand what is this data about. And then maybe you can remove duplicates. So processing is about removing duplicates, doing transformations, and just basically getting the data ready for machine learning. Then you can now store the data in a MySQL database. 
Um, yeah, so for data for data engineering, it's uh, because you said we are talking, we are getting from a structured way to a structured way. So MySQL database is an example of a structured database. We will do this around, I think, uh, day, day three, day four, I'm not sure. Then finally, you can visualize, communicate, and or deploy. So visualization is uh, any data you get, maybe to like a uh, MySQL database, is uh, mainly in a relational model, which is just basically tables. So visualizations go way further and into building graphs, maybe charts, understanding correlations. Then communication is about uh, writing reports. Because as data engineers, we deal with the technical side. And when you are out there working with uh, a team, you will need to interpret your technical data to a team that does not know anything about data science. That's why communication is important. And uh, deployment, if you are deploying your pipeline, maybe deployment means getting it from your, from your how do I say this? From your local environment and uh, into an deployment, an environment. that is usable by more than just you. If you are doing your data in a local environment, deployment is in a way that maybe the entire team that you're working with can actually access it easily, while uh, updating, maybe collect, maybe automatically collecting data from Twitter, then doing going through the pipeline, and then into a database, then it can be seen by the other teams. So that is what is basically involved in building a Twitter data pipeline. Today, we'll just go through maybe until the TP library and have a little bit of pre-processing. But uh, from pre-processing, doing EDA, that will be covered from tomorrow. OK, so this is just the structure of uh, what I've just explained. From Twitter, we use an API, which is provided by Twitter. We get a file, a file format that, uh, like, for example, the data that has been provided to you is in a JSON raw data format. Then from the data, you create a Python class, and uh, you can create a CSV that can be stored in um, a database structure like MySQL. So here, where we do the Python class DF extractor is where we now build that pipeline to understand the data doing pre-processing, and then a CSV format is easily, easily turned to a data frame which can be stored in a database like MySQL. Then Streamlit in this is used for visualization and um, yeah, mainly visualization and communicating the data. So that's the process uh, involved in creating a data pipeline. So an example of collecting data from Twitter, I've said you have to, we are using Twippy. And Twippy is the library used to collect data from uh, Twitter. So an example, like the example we have here uses keywords to get tweets. In other instances, you may use the users and get their data for the users. But in this case, we are using keywords. So like you can see here, you have mobile money, transfer mobile money. Maybe they were trying to understand the, the online or the e-mobile e money industry. That's why we have these keywords. The data that we'll be using for this week was trying to understand the economic uh, hardships uh, that we have currently. So most of the keywords used are like inflation, oil prices, just the current economic things going on. Uh, so, I actually think I'll take you through the code that was used to collect this week's data instead of doing this random random code. Just a minute. Mm. I hope you're still together. Yeah. Yes, we are still together. So far, any questions before I get to the final? Uh, okay, let me have one question here. Can you hear me? Yes. 
Jizahe, are you are you committed? Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, uh, I think we are using two people tracking uh, the So you're not as quick. Just uh, speak up. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, is there any another method of scrapping tutor data sets rather than TWP or and is there any ad best advantage for TWP to use it from others? I think, I do think there is another way. I'm not sure. Desmond, uh, do you know of another? I do think there's another. I have heard of another. It's not coming at the top of my head now. Desmond, do you? I think there's an. Desmond, do you know of another? Apart from TWP? I, I have not interacted with another one. I think most of the time we use TWP for extraction. Yeah, I know uh, there is uh, something called SunScrap. Uh, and I don't know whether they are. Uh, it doesn't uh, require any authentication and blah blah for uh, SunScrap uh, like uh, TWP. Uh, would the Twitter? Okay, I've not heard of that one. I don't know if Twitter would. Uh, okay, maybe it works. I have not heard of that library. Okay. So okay. I don't think I can comment as much. Maybe I look into it, then get back to you. What? Which uh, library is that? Uh, SunScrap. Sans crap. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other question before um, I continue? Sorry, Anastasia. Yes, um, yes. I was just looking it up now. It's sans crap. So yeah. S U N S C R A P E. Yes. Um, yeah. So. Okay, so we look into that, but mainly I think most of the mining I've been doing from Twitter has just been through TWP. Okay, okay, that's great. You can you can actually go through the documentation of TWP as well. I think uh, they tell you the benefits of using TWP, like they have this CASA function that helps the iteration much way easier than using other methods of uh, going through the tweets. There's a TWP, there's a TWP document that outlines the benefits of using TWP. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. So I'll just take you through how the collection of Twitter data for this week and the processes, like I have said. So TWP is mainly used to get Twitter data for this week. And so you import the TWP library along with uh, other libraries uh, from TWP that will help you. So if you're using Colab, you can just import them directly. But if you are using maybe Anaconda, you'd have to pip install the TWP. Okay, so the pandas and JSON, these are just additional libraries that will use will help us in uh, understanding the data. Then well, you're using, this is where we have now the APIs. When you apply for your API key from Twitter, you'll be given this, uh, these four keys. An API key, which is a consumer key, an API key secret, an access token, and access token secret. Actually, this uh, it should be blurring this. It should be confidential. Everyone has um, their own. And it's actually advisable when you share your code on GitHub you remove these keys because they should be, they, it should only be used by you. So don't take mine. <laughs> okay, and then now this is where we just create the API where for accessing the data. So just use Trippy, the library, and create the API by giving it the author, which is now your consumer key and your secret key. Yeah, and then you create the API. So since I was using Colab, I had to create a connection to my drive and to a specific folder to store the data. And uh, like just like the example I had shown you, the hashtags you have, I you put them as a list. The hashtags you'll need to connect um, to collect data for. So because our aim this week was economic hardships, that's why we used words like inflation, 
fuel prices, unemployment rate, uh, rate, oil prices, and so on and so forth. So we've been give, you've actually been given two sets of um, data sets, and the first data set was more general. The second one was uh, country specific. So this this next function, which is the one that now goes through the tweets based on your keywords. Uh, like I was saying now, this well TP gives an, uh, an an example of CASA, where in only one line, you can actually go through all the tweets that you want. For example, in this specific statement, you can go through 500 tweets per hashtag. So you can actually change this item to maybe you are accessing a thousand tweets, a million tweets, per hashtag because here we are doing for hashtag so it is this is done per hashtag the geocode in here is the variable that uh, makes the difference between the two the two data sets this is only included when you want something country specific for example the number used there was for kenya which is just i think the latitude the longitude and maybe a radius so that you can get a huge part of that country so the main aim of maybe going through keywords like this, we were getting the number of users who are engaging with these keywords so that we want to mind the users who are mainly talking about these keywords. So from this small code, just get all the users who are mainly interacting with these keywords that we are interested in. Then I just like you had said, when you get, when you get the users, you can save that file in a CSV or a JSON. So this was not main, mainly the raw data, so I just saved it in a CSV. And then now for each user who is engaging with our hashtag, I needed their information. And uh, Twitter, Twitter stores a lot of metadata per tweet. When was the tweet created at? Who's the one texting them? their id then what is the tweet itself what where is the is it in reply is it a retweet how many likes did that tweet get users release the twitter stores are a lot of information so since we wanted this information for the users engaging with our keywords this is another function that the same this is the only line that gets data from from Twitter, and again, we were going through 500 tweets per person to get this data. And uh, you can also specify here, we were interested in recent data, so this specified data that uh, is only engaging from this year. Uh, then we have this small, small uh, pipeline inside here, that for every tweet that you get for each user, you actually dump that file into a JSON file. So that's all that is involved in getting Twitter data. Very simple, this took me around uh, 30 minutes at most. It depends on the number of users you have and the amount of tweets per user. So it might take two minutes, two seconds, it might even take two hours. It just depends on the data that you have. So that is basically collecting data from Twitter and the resulting data, the resulting data is a JSON file like the one we have here that is just a row. Oops, it's a zip folder. Let me just show you from the presentation. Yeah, so the resulting JSON file is simply just it looks like this, <laughs> which is just most of it is actually just a dictionary, dictionaries in Python, which stores the data and the maybe like created that is a key and then the value. If you, if you understand the dictionaries, this is just a huge list of dictionaries, which is now the raw data from Twitter. Then uh, after getting your data, you can transform it into an easy, understandable format like CSV, then maybe to a data frame. Like for example, this is a data frame. You can just change your JSON to a data frame using pandas for easy understanding. How does it look? Do we have any, uh, do we have any duplicate data 
So this is just uh, how it can look after the raw data is now being understood. This is now the pre-processing part. After pre-processing, which I've said might include removing duplicates, uh, creating uh, transformations, the next thing now would be using visualizations. Visualizations can be, this is, uh, this is called, uh, what is it called? Uh, a word map. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what this is what called, cloud. I've lost. Word cloud. Word cloud. <laughs> word cloud, that's it. Then this is just, just have an example of a graph. So that's what visualizations are just simply about. So that's all we had for this session. Any So Abel, you're asking if we need to use API account to download our own file. Yes. If you want to actually directly interact with Twitter, you will need to get your own API keys. And the only way to get an API key is applying it from Twitter and giving them a valid reason. They can actually deny your reasons. So just, guys, be... Just, I think, just give a really... What, why do you want this key? How are you going to use it? Be specific on why you want this key so that you can be given access. Because even the, when I applied for mine, I think they rejected it at first. But so, yeah. Okay. Do we have the code you presented? No, the code I've just presented has not been shared with you. I was tasked with collecting data, and that's why I came up with that code. That one has not been shared with you. It is not part of this week. Any other question? Dalila, examples of uh, what? Dalila? Okay, we'll wait to hear from Dalila. I see Nijus, your hand is raised. I can ask your question. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Nijus. Yeah, I mean, uh... Do we already have the data which is collected from Twitter? We do the have GitHub. the data. We do have the data so, on the on the repo you just uh, forked. There is a folder called data, so it's right. in there. Uh, can you share the code you have shown us? I mean. Is that possible, like? Yeah, I think I can share. I'll just scroll, just remove my my Twitter keys, then maybe I can share. Yeah. Fine, thank you. So, Abel, you're asking which data to use. Um, the data that is around 100 MBs, that is the one that uh, will be mainly used for this week. Getting a Twitter developer account approved, Shekoni, might, uh, it might take 24 to 48 hours, and that might be uh, it's disapproved or approved, so you'd have to reapply if it is disapproved. Mm, the session is being recorded, yes, Vita. 
the recordings i think uh everest will tell you how it's accessible but from the previous from the previous batches they they are always posted on youtube the Ten academy has a, a channel on youtube mm -hmm. so michael is asking about the case yeah this week you won't need to download any data it has already been done for you so any other question or should we end the class i think uh, there's nothing more to share. Any questions? Oh, okay. So, Shekoni, I see you're asking about uh, data on the Monday folder. On uh, the week zero, on the week zero folder, there's a data file. It is the same as the one on GitHub. A data file then on monday there's another data which is actually the simple task that we can do today if you are in the morning class we were setting our python environment and uh you can there's a, on monday there's a simple task there's a notebook for a simple task that uh, you should attempt just to make sure that your environment is running everything has been done for you that was another twitter data that has already been corrected collected sorry you just need to run the notebook, just uh, do some pre-processing. Then uh, the data folder in Monday is in relation to that task. That is not uh, weekly data. And uh, do we need to remove any punctuations? And how do we deal with slang in the data? So you're asking for slang in Twitter, in, in a tweet? About the commas, I... Um, is this a comma in a tweet? Is it a comma in a, in the JSON? Because I know the JSON file comes in a dictionary format, which is easier to send to CSV. So, Jalil, I don't think I get your question right. What kind of data preprocessing techniques are helpful to have a good result after call? So when we do may, maybe data preprocessing, when you are doing your ADA and understanding the data, there's just main things, simple things you need to do, like getting um, are there duplicates in your data? Are there like maybe uh, transformations, one hot encoding? There's so many things you can do in preprocessing. But I think that class will be tackled in detail tomorrow, Biruk. I think that one will be handled tomorrow. Okay. Shikoni is asking about a challenge on the, the repo. I think that challenge, the, the the repository challenge is the challenge for the entire week, which you have tasks to finish per day. The simple task is just a way to introduce you to Python and the environment. Just a, It's just a simple task. You won't even be required to submit it, but just a, to familiarize yourself with the environment if you're new to the environment. The repository is the challenge for the entire week with tasks specific uh, for the days. What is the main data we want to extract? So the main data we were extracting, Abel, is the tweets per user. We need to know what they are talking about. So we were extracting the tweets and the metadata related to the tweets. When was it created? Where is the location of this user? Uh, was it a reply? Did someone reply to it? How many replies did it get? That's the kind of data we were getting. No, Shekoni, the one on GitHub needs to be submitted. The one not to be submitted is the one on the Monday folder. It is called a simple task. It's just to get you acquainted to the environment. The GitHub needs to be submitted. 
how to connect. Uh, Aaron, I don't think I get your question right. How to connect the Twitter app with the Twitter data? Maybe just speak up and uh, elaborate. Aaron? Aaron, thank you. Okay. Did you, did you have a question before we end? I think uh, we, we can end now. There are not so many questions. Yeah, thanks. Did you then, Binyam? Okay. So. Yeah, I wanted you to clarify uh, on what you have to submit today because it's kind of confusing. Like what you have to submit, submit today because in the other document that was shared, there are tasks uh like five tasks but then uh at the end of the document there is also deliverables what you have to submit each day and she just mentioned the the github link so are we doing anything else maybe you can clarify okay just a minute So I think you should follow the deliverables from the week zero challenge. Let the deliverables guide you on what should be delivered each day. Follow the deliverables for submissions. Is that clear, DJ? So if, uh, for Monday, it's only the, the link for for the link for the GitHub repository, right? If the deliverables say so. Yeah. I mean, the repository will only be given a submission link to upload the GitHub link. So, so you, should, uh, you, should, you should note if there are a few tasks to be done, if you should have done something on that GitHub. Sorry, can you go to the tasks? Uh, maybe. Sorry? Can you go to the tasks on that, the, the document that you, you were sharing? Mm -hmm. On tasks. Tasks. Yeah, above this. Uh, 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 I scroll a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have to, to do all of this for, like, this is the, the first task. Do you have to do all of this and then submit them? So, submit uh, the link if, after I have done this. If you do all of this, you will have be you'll be done with task one. But I think let me just go through the first deliverable to make it a little bit clear. So for Monday, a GitHub link to your repo that you will use for the rest of the week. Just make sure that it is public and you use this report throughout the week. So I think uh, what this deliverable what it's just from reading it is just after forking and you have your github you have the repo on your account just that link will be enough but that does not mean that the whole of today you only do that because if you only do that by wednesday you'll be overwhelmed with the amount of tasks that's there so after just submitting the link you can just go ahead and do task one, do everything in task one. If you still have time today, start task two. Don't just focus on Monday, task one, task two on Tuesday. Some of the tasks can be very overwhelming and it will be easier to tackle them earlier. So I think only the link will be needed for this for today. You can confirm that with Everest, who is on the training ops, but uh, the task should not guide you on what to deliver. The deliverable should guide you on what to deliver. Yeah, thanks. 
yeah, the task is mainly just like a guide on uh, the processes you need to do so that you finish this week's challenge. That's what basically the tasks are. Okay, I hope that's clear, did you? Hello? Yes, Faith? Yeah, I'm sorry if you answered this already, but I can see it is also in the chat. Um, do we provide the link to the uh, forked uh, repository or another repo that we created of sorts? You actually, you need to fork the repository from Tin Academy from Tinaka, you need to ref to fork it. I don't know what other link you'd be submitting, because uh, this is the repository that will be tracked through during the entire week. So I don't know which other repository you want to submit. The forked one okay, is the I, needed I'll repository. My question. Okay. Biniam. 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 Demis. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, you can hear Hello. you. Yes, you can hear you. Okay, uh, my question is about the submission uh, link. I think we've received a submission, uh, a GitHub repository link submission. Uh, but on the page, uh, there are a few things I don't understand. Uh, how exactly do we add the link? I mean, to the right, there is a, a button that says add or create in the turn in. Do we just... Uh, copy the link there and uh, press the turn in button or do uh, do we also need to do something with the uh, text uh, in the middle like link in personal account works describe what it means doesn't work describe what it means uh, what are they exactly okay Biniam, thank okay you Biniam, for your thank question. you for your question mm. Uh, so the best person to answer that question is Abdullahi. He's dealing with the Google Classroom platform. And um, I don't have access to the platform, but uh, the best person to direct that question to is Abdullahi. I think Abdullahi Asalau, that's his name. You can just contact him on Slack and that question will be answered by him. Is that mm. clear, Binyam? Is that clear, Binyam? Yes, it's clear. Okay, uh, Jalil, Jalil, what's your question? Jalil? Abdul, Jalil, Jalil. Oh, okay. Then Margaret, Margaret, what's your question? Margaret Shapkiro. Okay, Biruk. Biruk, what's your question? Uh, my question is, uh, under, what do we supposed to do on, on uh, simple task, uh, uh, chapter notebook five, which is, uh, on the week zero Monday folder. So are we supposed to submit this task also? Thank you. Uh, I didn't get that uh, right. Which task are you asking about? On the files which are shared on the Google Drive, uh, which uh, include for Monday to Tuesday, and on the Monday folder, there is uh, a simple task, a notebook file, uh, which has something we so we supposed to uh, answer. We have two questions, I guess I see there. So w when do we actually uh, do this task? Okay, okay, I get your question. The answers are actually supposed to be posted on uh, maybe your LinkedIn, your LinkedIn pro, your LinkedIn page or your Twitter page. I think that was not included. I'll just include it on the task. The answers are just just understand the the environment from your understanding. Do the questions, then just share them on a social platform, maybe Twitter or LinkedIn. I'll just add that that was supposed to be added. Sorry for that.
Any other question? Or should I, I should I assume that you're done? Yeah, excuse me. Uh, I just got one. Could you clarify what you just okay. said about the uh, LinkedIn or other profiles? I didn't quite get it. It's the simple task on uh, on the Monday folder. The answer to the questions were not to be submitted back, but uh, posted either on your LinkedIn or um, Twitter. I'll just add that simple instruction. I think that was missed. I'll add that simple instruction at, on that task. OK, thank you. Any other question? Should I assume that you are done? Okay. So thank you for attending this session. Just uh, continue with the tasks. And I think the next uh, meetings will be tomorrow for the stand-ups. You just follow the schedule. But I think that's what is going on at the moment. Oh, Salam. Salam, you have a question before we close? Uh, yes, uh, you said we have to uh, install TP if we are going to use Anaconda. Uh, how are we going to do that? Hello. Uh, okay, so I have some here, Salam. Okay. So in Anaconda, I think it is uh, as simple as PIP install tp i'm not sure if it is pip3 but it is uh, we we actually use the pip to install the libraries on anaconda i think let me just confirm it should be pip or pip3 install anyone who can answer salam immediately before i open my anaconda it seems to be taking some time Um, so, Musa, I think you can search uh, online for the library. So, uh, like she's saying, either you use PIP or use PIP3, but I think normally if you only have one version of, of Python, so PIP3 would say point to the version 3 of Python, but you can also use Conda. So, it depends um, where you can find that uh, library. But if you search Conda install and the name of the library or pick install the name of the library, you should find out how to actually install it. Okay. Okay, any other question? Are we done? Need just another question? Need just yes, I have one question that like uh, in open to I can use Jupyter notebook. So is it really necessary to use Anaconda like to install? Or do, okay. do we need to use like Jupyter lab or something else? I, I think the installation of the libraries uh, depends on the environment that you're using. If you have Anaconda installed, then you can use Anaconda. If you are using uh, PyCharm, you can just go to the command prompt and there is, it's not necessary to use Anaconda, just depending on the environment you are using, I think uh, you just find how the command to use for installing that library, then you can, just, you don't have to use Anaconda, that's the best. Sure, thank you. Any other question? Are we good to end? Okay, so I think we can end there. Any other question should be forwarded on Slack. And kindly use uh, all week zero for any questions regarding to the challenge. I have a question. Snack. Okay. Uh, this question, like, uh, I'm a little bit confused. You see, for today, we have got uh, two, like, two tasks. We have that Twitter challenge, and also we have another. In this Monday folder, there is that 
a uh, simple task that has, be, has been given. So we are supposed to do it and submit it, uh, or rather or, uh, we are to uh, update it in our social media accounts. The simple task is updated in the social media account. I will just add that, uh, I will add that instruction. The simple task is for social media. Any mm -hmm. other, just follow the deliverables. Is it going to be assessed? Because you you will add some hashtags, maybe hashtag in academy. It's just more of the community part of this program because you really need to interact with the community. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I think that's all. We can uh, end there. I don't know if the one who recorded it is still here. Is it Abdullahi? You can just end the recording. <laughs>